Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects, Part 18. A more detailed look at the equipment in the workshop, showing some of the tooling and having another look at the DRO, Digital Readout, on the milling machine. Andrew's Workshop is in a converted double garage and the space available is full of very good things. Over now to the live audio in the workshop. It's a cornucopia of tooling. Look at all the toolboxes and none of them are empty. This is where a lot of the expense is. This is a dividing head and behind it is a dial test indicator. Andrew has a lot of tooling. Under the green cover is a Myford ML7. Quite an early one. It's okay, it works very well indeed. But it's not a patch on the connoisseur. And it doesn't have a DRO. How old is this? 75 years old. Well, it's looking quite good for its age. How old are you, Keith? 72. The lady's looking better than you, mate. Well, I know. And it runs as well as it looks. Yeah, quite impressed. Probably would run a bit better with some oil in the lubricators, but it's not going to be running for very long. This is Andrew's reciprocating saw, and it fits into a lathe. And it's really clever. Do you make this then? Yeah. I forget the man's name now, but he's quite famous for having the machine assembled. You may have gathered that Andrew does actually like machining a lot more than I do. And he's good at it, I must admit. I've watched him develop from building internal combustion engines. I'll just pan across and show you. Andrew, how do you keep your workshop so clean? Where's all the swarf? I know you've got a vacuum cleaner, but so have I. But around my vacuum cleaner, there's usually a lot more swarf. What's the secret? Allocate one morning to clean once a week. I know some people won't leave the workshop unless it's spotless because they don't want to walk into it. But when you're halfway through a project, I allocate one morning in the week. It keeps you warm as well. I notice underneath Andrew's lathe in the cupboard are some collets. And I had some collets very similar to this, but I don't see the point of them. Call me stupid, but a collet is great if you can put a shaft through the collet. It's not so good if it stops at the end of the chuck. So I suppose it depends how you mount the collets. This is a collet adapter that, uh, did you make that or did you buy it? No, this was uh, from RDG. This is a commercial collet adapter that does allow the work to go through the chuck. My collet chuck is different, it's a really old one. Because you've got a beautiful collet set, haven't you? Yeah. That's worth about say, seven, eight hundred quid, that is. Well, it was 450 when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> 40 odd years ago. Yeah, somebody Yes, the Myford Connoisseur is quite a piece of kit. Not the cheapest lathe out there, but very good. Which DRO is better? The one on the milling machine looks better. The graphics appear to be better. I don't see much in the way of graphics on the one on the Myford. You don't do much hole centering on the lathe. I understand. I and mean, this is a really good Myford. It's better than the average one. It's the large bore model connoisseur. And it really is a beautiful machine. One thing I've noticed about the automatic controller on my small Warco lathe is it's very good. You've got infinite control over the speed. The only thing I'm not happy about is when I put it in reverse, it will only go at one very slow speed. Is this the same? No. Let me just spin it up. Please make sure I'm not just touching. Another great thing about this connoisseur is job button. Yes, I can think of some applications for that. Screw cutting. Well, screw cutting or even tapping. Tapping and also when you bring in the thread in, the, the threading die, 
you can then just bring it in. Yeah. You're not hitting the shoulder too hard. Yeah, yeah. That's generally what I use it for. And also, if it traps you around and cuts your finger off, you don't lose it all. Only a percentage relative to the speed. That's very useful. Have you ever thought about that, Keith? I don't need one. Okay. What I'm really impressed with is the performance of the Walco M180 lathe. I have a really cheap quick change tool post that I bought for it. You see it on my channel frequently. And an extra long, thin, once again, cheap parting tool. And it will part off stainless steel at a good speed without any coolant. I noticed the tool arrangement on Andrew's machine is it has an upside down parting tool, which is better really, I suppose, for parting off and it saves changing tools, which is always a good thing. There is a thought, Keith, about parting from the rear, if you pardon that expression, is that when you're actually parting, you're putting the forces down, down yeah. mm. whereas when you're parting off here, you're pulling it up, up. On the back, yeah. This goes back a long way. I've seen uh, upside down parting tools on a lot of very lightweight machines. This is not the heaviest weight machine I've ever seen. But I've seen them on the really old stuff in the magazines that I used to read when I was younger. We're setting the X and Y mode. Yeah. So if you're setting something up and you put your piece in here and then you want to go right, I'm happy with the position where it is. You can just centre it, centre it. Now you want to drill a hole. This is in millimetres obviously, six millimetres away. There you are. It's as simple as that. And if you want to then edge found it, you want to come in, you can just simply do that. And if you're just looking at numbers of which you really want to just hit and lock the table down, you are there. There's other features that the DRO allows you to do. You're obviously seeing the holes that you can do in a circle. You can even do straight lines. I don't even think I've ever used that to be honest with you, but it gives you the angle that you want the holes to be on from the X and Y plane. So it accurately would drill those holes. You can even put a radius. For the first time ever, a DRO is making sense. I hadn't realized how close it was to CNC. It sort of shows you the way to go and you just put the mechanical input, turning the dials and watching the numbers, which is okay. Yes, it's a very clever gadget. Buying the machine is just the first baby step. Buying the tooling is the expensive bit. Yeah, for instance, even the machine vice is not a cheap item. This one is. It's what about the little one? That was £100. That's a sober one. I think they're about... 40, 50 pounds. Well, at least you've got a Vertex rotary table. I've got one of those, but I never use it. I bought a cheap one from RDG Tools, and it does the job that I need it to do. But then again, this is better. In this clip is the Stuart triple expansion engine that is almost complete. You can now see it running on Andrew's YouTube channel, Model Engineering Adventures. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.